Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cloud Show. And for those of you who are regular listeners, viewers, um, sometimes people are both and one or the other, um, welcome back home. You know that I've been gone um, for my knee replacement, which was um, quite a journey that I've been sharing with you. Um, but now I am back and here we are. So um, it's so good to be home. It's so good to be back, hopefully in kind of a regular rhythm. Um, only irregular rhythm is um, like those of you who have who've let me know that you've been through this. You know, you don't just go through the surgery and then it's over, right? Then you get the physical therapy is um, a lot more painful than the surgery because you're asleep in the surgery, but then you're awake in the physical therapy. And that that nice lady, the one I had, kept going more, 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 more. She had no mercy. The other day, I, I, I literally, I was, I thought I was going to like, pa literally, I mean, you do sometimes feel like you're going to pass out the pain is, is, you know, that you're, you're pressing into. And so after that particular move and I, I turned to her, I said, so when you make people do this, do you, do you know what it feels like? And she goes, I don't care. <laughs> you don't care. She goes, no, I don't care. You got to do it. What does it matter if I care? You got to do it. I thought, well, there's a little dose of reality. So hopefully this program is a show where you got to do it, but we care. And so we're going to try to always make this a place with our extended family here of listeners, which, by the way, you guys are the greatest audience in the world. You go tackle life. But it's a place where we try to um, very much lean into the reality, even when it hurts. And we also do the opposite. We reach out and grab new realities that don't hurt. But they would replenish us and fill us and be fruitful and have all sorts of like realizations of good things in life if we could kind of get through the wall, a little wall of fear sometimes, or a little wall of letting go of something old. So the good and the bad, we're all going to put our arms around that and we're going to face that reality. But hopefully we're going to do it with a lot of um, support for one another. One of the things I love about what you do on Facebook, for example, is... Um, and YouTube and, and, and Instagram as well. When somebody shares something, and oftentimes for the callers or also for people that are posting on there, you guys really do care. And that is, um, I hear it all the time, what that value of support does for people. I experienced it in the past two weeks in my own life. Um, it it changes us. It changes us. I, I remember, you know, orthopedic surgery, it's your bones. What the heck does a bone know about feelings, right? It's a bone. Right? Bone, cut, saw, chisel, screwdriver, pain. Well, a friend of mine went through this a few years ago and had some real complications um, and had to go because he had, there were just things wrong with him that were different. And um, I actually talked to his surgeon. And the surgeon told me, he said, you know, one of his big, big problems is he has no support system. So my friend is uh, late seventies, very active, big skier, biker, mountain biker, very active. You'd think he was 40, but he's single at this point in his life. He lives alone. His kids have all moved away. And the surgeon said, one of the big problems is he has no support system. And I remember thinking, I'm talking to this orthopedic surgeon, and I remember thinking, okay, I'm a psychologist. I understand support systems. What the heck does that have to do with a bone? Well, as I shared with you the other day, I mean, I found out it does. It strengthens the whole body. You know, it strengthens everything when we have that kind of connection. So I'm glad you guys provide that for each other. Sorry, I got something in my eye here. Um, and that we can build that kind of community. Um, okay, so I've been sharing a um, few things. What I like to do in the beginning of the show is just share something I've been thinking about or dealing with. And, um, you know, some of it recently, you know, it's so subjective for me because I've been in the midst of all this. Um, but one of the things that I've really, really come to notice, and it's kind of a mindfulness thing, is I go, as I go through, you know, the sort of the, you know, the working out of this thing is, and I'm mindful of it every single day, every single day. In fact, I even shared this with my physical therapist who didn't, didn't know about the research. Um, but the research is something called the 40% principle. 
And the 40% principle is that the, the way that we are wired, that basically when we get to a, an exertion point, you know, to push and go harder, go farther, go faster, or push through something, the system is wired to at about 40% of how far you can go. The 40% rule says the system says, okay, you've reached your limit. And we kind of, oh, that's all I can do. And the system will lie to us, probably out of protective measure, right? But basically, here's the thing. When our system, you know, the most says, I can't do another rep. You see the guy in the gym going, you can do it. Come on, one more, one more. Let me, give me one more, give me. And they keep pushing and they find out they can, right? Or whatever it is that our, our individually by ourselves, our system will tell us, that's all you can do. You can't do this. You can't go the next step. You can't take that course. You can't confront that person. You know, you, you, you just can't get up and go to work today. You can't, you know, you can't, you're at your limit. Well, we're, we're by and large, a lot of times we're not at our limit. We're at the limit that our brain tells us we're at. And so as I've been applying that, um, you know, one of the, probably the most difficult thing for me in all of this is, you know, your knee has to be in at an angle and it's all clogged up with stuff in here. And so it trying to get more of this movement out of it is, is made in millimeters. And so I'll get it as far as I can in a chair and I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. And I can see the dust on the floor and I'm looking to get my toe to the next particle of dust. You know, it might be that much. And I'm thinking it's as far as it'll go, as far as I'll go. And I'll go, I'll go 40%, 40%. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And the pain is saying, don't push, don't push, don't push. And you're going, keep pushing, keep pushing. And then you see that next speck of dust and you've claimed ground. Well, it's not just in physical pain, but this feeling that we've hit our limit is basically in you, something that's going to kick in anytime you are in what your mind perceives as kind of uncharted territory or painful territory or scary territory, okay? So here's what happens. All of us have this circle of today's functioning that we operate in, all right? And that's where we operate in. Well, you get into a relationship and let's say you got to take the next step that requires you to get out of that circle of competency and comfort. You know, you've always heard the phrase comfort zone. Well, that's a reality, a comfort zone, We're comfortable here. But to step out and raise your hand and say, you know what, I've got a different opinion than that. Or, you know what, I disagree with that. Or, no, that's not something I want to do. Or, no, I'm not going to subject myself to that anymore because that hurts me. Or, no, I can't do that because I really want to spend my time in a different way. Or, 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 whatever that is. Then we hit that limit. You know, at that moment, when it's time to step out of that, what happens is everything in you says, no, don't do that. No, you can't do that. No, don't do that. No, you can't do that. And I want you today to take away and figure out in your own circle of what the next little place is outside the circle. I want you to start to notice moment by moment when you hit that. No, don't say that. No, don't do that. No, that's too hard. No, that won't work. No, I don't have the money for that. No, I'd probably fail. No, what if they laughed at me? Well, my mother wouldn't like that. Whatever that is, you're being invited. You're being invited to reclaim some ground. But the most important piece of this is to notice, to notice the trigger of when it says you're in scary land now. Okay. Now, your system will interpret that trigger as back off, back off, go back to where it's comfortable. 
go back to where it's comfortable. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm training a Doberman Pinscher right now. And, you know, one of the things that, that is effective in, in some aspects of training are, and don't go write me letters that this is me. And I know there's a lot of opinions. I would never hurt my dog. I promise you they're blunted, but, but the little pinch collars, the way they work, now the way they're structured, if you're yanking on a dog, go do that. But the way they worked is that they move. And if a dog is pulling, it's going to feel some pressure like that. And what you do is you hold still. And then as soon as they move back, you release it and they learn, oh, I moved back. Now I'm comfortable again. And then they learn to not pull. And I know there's gentle leads and I'm just illustrating the principle here. I know I'm going to get letters about this. I am a dog lover. I won't hurt my dog. I promise you. But they learn, oh, when I push, I feel discomfort. I'll back up. Oh, I'm back in comfort zone. That's how it is with us. Okay? But you're supposed to be a free, autonomous person. You're not supposed to be somebody that's got, somebody else has a a leash on you, holding you back from your next gaining ground. And we have leashes on us in our heads where mom or dad or schools or teachers or philosophies or religious systems or, you know, whoever it was, past exes, they've got a leash. And when you say, I'm going to speak up, they pull the pressure and you go, okay, I won't. You back up and the pressure's gone. Now you feel comfortable. again. And that, my friends, is how life remains very, very, very small very small there's a comfort zone problem is it gets smaller and smaller and smaller there's very 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 few aspects in life where we can kind of remain neutral growth where we're not going forward or backward we're just sitting in one place that's so rare for so many reasons the truth is if we're not getting stronger we are getting weaker we're getting smaller and we're reducing life. So the lesson is this. Learn through being mindful. Like Psalm 139 says, God, try my anxious thoughts. Test my anxious thoughts and see if there's any hurtful way in me and lead me into the way of the everlasting. So God, when I say, I want to I want to speak up on the team or I want to, I want to say to the family, you know, this addiction that's going on over here, hurting all of us, that's not okay, or whatever it is. When I want to do that, and I have an anxious thought, I want you to recognize that and get above that thought and say, that's just a leash. That's just a leash. And it's time for me to step into that space with the right support and the right help. And reclaim that ground. And I'll close with this before we go to calls. Let me give the number, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sitting here so feeling connected with you guys. And my team's going, get the number, get the number. Uh, 844-940-2774. That's 844-940-2774. Uh, will you guys help me? Would a bunch of people call right now so, so Albie can go back to sleep and not worry that I have it? Have we given the number? Hey, Abby. Hi, eight four four nine four zero two seven seven four. The uh, you know, in closing, there, I think I started to say, is one little quick story. I remember a woman that had been married to a abusive man that you know kept her down, called her stupid. You wouldn't do anything without me. You know, you'd have no life without me. You can't. And he kind of kept her down and. And so, you know, she was in that role, that kind of, you know, sort of weird marriage. And then um, she gets to be, what, 50, late 40s. And finally, he moves on. She's devastated. But she realizes she doesn't know what she's going to do. She has no skills. She hasn't done anything. She's living in a shadow, all of that. But I remember saying to her, you are so smart. You can do anything you want to do. What do you want to do? And so we started to work on unearthing the dreams in her and what she wanted to do. 
And what she wanted to do, she had actually had experience in and ideas and talents and abilities and actually some access to some some networks that this could work in, but it was going to require some certifications and a few courses. And, and she, she had some hours and and long story short, she was going to have to go back to school for a year or so. And I said, well, come on, let's do it. Apply. She literally, she said, I can't, I go to pick up the phone to call the school and get an application. This is before you could do it online get an application. She said, I can't. All I can hear is my husband telling me, they'll never accept you. You're too old to get back in school. Won't even do any good to apply. And she said, I just can't do it. So brought her into my office one day. You know, she's sitting up there in the waiting room. I brought her in the office one day and I said, there's a phone. We're going to call. And she goes, wait a minute. So you're going to call me. You're going to ask for an application. And so through fear and trepidation, she noticed the trigger, but she pushed through it and she reclaimed that next little piece of ground. Well, you reclaim that, you reclaim that, and you reclaim that, and you reclaim that, and reclaim that, and reclaim that. And And now she actually runs, she might be retired by now. She runs a company that does her dream. It was all not listen to the voice. That's all it was. Everything else was there that was needed. So come to that moment. Don't believe the 40% that you've hit your limit. Okay, 844-940-2774, 844-940-2774. And um, we are going to talk to um, Mindy, who is calling us from the great state of Arkansas, from which I just returned. Mindy, what's going on? Welcome to the program. Hello. How are you? Hello. I'm good. How are you? Hello. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking my call, and thank you so much for all that you do and for just sharing what you just shared, because I think that's interesting, because that's kind of what I'm calling in about. So thank you. (laughs) Well, good. Are are you, you thinking about going back to school? No, 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 no. Just about triggers. 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 Okay. Well, so I'm a mess. I'll just start out. <laughs> you're you're a mess. Um, I am. I'm a mess. I need some some um, you know, I'm desperate. I'm calling in. I've I've done a lot of things that I feel like to try to help, and um, maybe I need more intensive counseling. I don't know, but I thought I would call and just get your opinion because I know you're awesome and you have lots of wisdom. <laughs> Well, I hope not to disappoint you. I don't know how much I got, but whatever no, I got, no. <laughs> I'll I'll share with you. So tell me, tell me real quick, what is your question? What do you? So I. What's your dilemma? Sure, I was married for thirty years to a man who was addicted to pornography, and of course that escalated to other stuff. You know, I just it was just a marriage of lies and deceit and yuck. Okay. When you said escalate to other stuff, you mean like 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 pornographic pictures with real bodies on them? Well, like from pornography to like chat room to putting ads on Craigslist to Ashley Madison to and to some of these some of these things I didn't. Yes, some okay. of these things I didn't find out until right. after I left. But anyway, okay. So, so you I got out and now, now. You got out and now what? So I'm remarried, happily remarried. I'm so blessed. And so God just brought an amazing man into my life. And uh, we're in, we've been married a year and a half. And some, a lot of these triggers are really starting to surface. And I'm just struggling with the yuck from, it's like, I feel like God's brought me into the promised land, but I'm still in Egypt mentally because I yeah. have all this yuck. And, you know, their triggers can be like, they're so, they seem so insignificant, but at the moment they're huge for me. Like, like I won't like, how can I explain it? Like movies are movies that, that may have a quick scene, which we try to avoid those, but you know, sometimes they happen. Um, right. not even like nudity, but even like just a show that has cleavage, a woman with cleavage. I mean, all the, there's all these threats to me 
that cause a trigger. And it's like, before I even have a chance to process it, my heart starts beating real fast. I um, am, I have to leave. Like, I just, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. You have to leave. (laughs) Well, I mean, I leave the room. Why? I just, well, it's just my response. I'm just, it's just, I I don't want to see it. I don't want to feel it. So I just like go in the other room or I go and I, all right. I like pray so I'm, what, I'm, what I'm what I'm focusing yeah. on what I'm focusing on there is the feeling that you have to leave. Well, I don't have to. I mean, I okay. don't always. Sometimes I make myself sit there. Okay. And then it can and the, be, and, we can be outside. We can. Right. There's just so many triggers. We can oh, be outside. There, there's and, no. There's no. There's no shortage of triggers, and then people try to get away from the triggers, and then they find out. Well, they can have the thoughts in their own head. Yeah, I mean, you can't escape them, but my question is... You can't escape them. I remember a woman getting mad, like, disallowing her husband to go to some particular grocery store because it's a store where a lot of the women wear yoga pants. Mm -hmm. And I said, how how far does she think she can control you to where... I mean, you can do this in your head, right? You don't have to go to the grocery store. So triggers can be exactly be anywhere. Right. So, so tell tell me exactly. Your well, what so your how question? do do I need like really intense like someone I've read places where women who's married to a man who's had these addictions that it's like trauma and you need special counseling. Do like do I need to seek out some special? Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I don't know either. Like, um, well, let let me give you the kind of the way that I would would think about it. Okay. Um, When your husband did this to you, did that trigger previous abandonments of you in your life? Is he the first person Um, that's ever hurt you or betrayed you? You come from a deeply grounded, intact, wonderful place in life. You've never been hurt like that. And he's the first person that wounded you because that happens sometimes. Or when he did it, was it particularly hard because it also tapped into wounds that you've experienced in other places? I don't necessarily mean affairs, but you know, just hurts or abandonments, places where love has gone away is what we're talking about here. And we kind of talked about that in some counseling, like in my home life growing up, like my dad was an alcoholic. Of course, he wasn't a horrible, he didn't like, I never saw him drunk. So it wasn't like he was, but in my, in my adult years, once I It's hard for an alcoholic father to be um, present. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then he ended up having an affair with my mom. And so that could have started yeah, some of yeah. my insecurity, I'm sure. all that. I I'm, don't know. I'm sure it did. Okay, so let, uh, let me give you kind of a way to think about this, okay? Because I don't know what all you've done, okay. but this would be a sort of a menu to think about it. Okay, so what okay. you're talking about here, you're, you're basically talking about your mind, at least what you've described to me, okay? There may be more. But what you described to me is, look at it this way. I feel like love is here. Love is here, but it might go away because he sees somebody prettier or he's with somebody, you know, what, whatever reason, whether it's, you know, you said the cleavage will do it or there's, it doesn't matter. But the basic fear right. is, the basic fear is you love him, he loves you, he's here, but I could lose it. All right. Now, probably. Okay. Who knows? I wasn't there when you were growing up, but typically when you see kind of, you know, you got an alcoholic man that has affairs, it's not common for them to be really, really present and connected with their kids, but they can. It does happen. But somewhere along the line, you've learned that love can go away. Okay. So it's a loss. It's a rejection. It's a wound. Now, the reason I ask about this is there's, there's two or three parts to this. And, and I'll, I'll, Leave these out here for you and you can go process them with somebody or maybe a counselor. But the person is, we always want to have the, want to make sure that you've processed all the previous wounds. Want to make sure that you've grieved him. You've blamed him adequately. You've forgiven him. You've gotten him out of your head. You've, you know, you're done with him. If you never saw another movie with, with, you know, boob cleavage on it, it, it wouldn't bother you because you've 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 kind of squeezed the sponge, right? You've gotten all the pain out of this. You've really worked on that. 
Right. And also, and I really whatever, think I have. Okay, if you're done with him, that's fine. If you saw him out there with I another am. woman right <laughs> now, you'd say, like the fireworks, I'm happy she's got to deal with him and I don't. And then you've dealt and with your childhood true. stuff. But I just want to make sure you've, you've dealt with all of that, okay? But if yes, that's true, okay. then what's happened is you've kind of got a learning thing going on. You know, triggers are about reminding us of dangers we've experienced in the path. And you got a map in your head that says where there is love, it can go away. Okay, so here's uh -huh. the problem with what you're doing. The problem with what you're doing is exactly what I talked about earlier in the program, that when you're feeling the trigger, then you're moving away, right, to make the trigger go away. Right. You're going in the other room, you're, you know, whatever it is. OK. But. You're not keeping the connection. That's the problem. See, the fear that the trigger does is it makes you lose the connection with him. Right. Right. So right. ultimately what you've got to do, and I'd go to a therapist and help him walk you through all of this, is say, okay, when I feel a trigger, if, if I were working with you, I would suggest a few things. When you feel the trigger, what I would suggest is there are cognitive techniques because thinking about that's only going to lead you into a hole right i would right. block it i would block it ignore it connect with him and get distracted in the connection okay because you're going to re-experience the love i'm sorry did i say this was going to be easy shame <laughs> on me Okay. I do want to do. I mean, I want but freedom. I would, but I I, and I would I, tell him, I, I would tell him, I'd say, you know, sometimes I get triggered. It has nothing to do with you. In fact, you're the one I want to get over the triggers for. I'd say sometimes I might get and triggered he, and I'm going to turn to you and say, you're still here, right? He's going to go, yeah, I'm still here. And you're going to regain the connection. Okay. Because I want okay. the experience of the connection to be larger than the fear of the loss of connection. But right now, if you get obsessing about it, you pull off and you go try to just pray or, you know, kind of deal with this in your head, you've actually lost the connection. That's what the whole fear is about to begin with. Got it. Okay. So that I makes want sense. you, I want you blocking, ignoring, experiencing connection, being vulnerable with him. If you have to, if this is okay with him saying, whoops, triggered again. No, it's not you. I need your help. He'll bring you into, you know, up on his white horse and whisk you off into the, into the roses <laughs> and and rapture you into all sorts of you know incredible love and romance <laughs> and you're go what the heck was i thinking this man loves me and you're going to experience it and <laughs> that's connection. right all right okay now, that's great that's that's in the triggers and then when you're out mm -hmm. and about and you get triggered then then thought stopping block it and then get into the experience of him that you have in your head Think about how y'all were this morning at breakfast or yesterday or whatever it is. Two. Three. Actually, that's four. Four is there are some times that you probably need to do some exposure with that and go talk to a mm -hmm. counselor about when I see these triggers. Because I want to get to a place where I, I can think about the cleavage and know my life doesn't disappear. It's kind of like a phobic obsession. So. You do uh -huh. all that. You do all that. Look, look at you. Come on, girl. Listen, look, 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 look. <laughs> listen to me. Listen to me. What? Look what you have done. You have recovered from multiple betrayals and somehow in the grace of God and mm -hmm. your own figuring it together, Look what you did. You picked a good one. You know That's how rare right. that is? You know how rare that well, is? Well, it took it, it took a, it took a try, believe me. <laughs> I had lots oh, of cancel. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Did I say this was going to be easy? <laughs> of course it took a try. <laughs> so the next thing is to be able to enjoy. As the Bible says, God, you've you've put me in, you've put me, you've made my boundaries lie in 
wonderful spaces mm -hmm. so that I might dwell in it. That verse, mm -hmm. pretty cool verse, actually, you've caused me to yes. dwell. You're stopping and interrupting the dwelling in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And if couples would learn how to dwell in the moment of the relationship, and if we would learn how to dwell in the moment of our lives and live in that, as Jesus mm -hmm. said in Matthew 6, that today, today, that's where it matters. And be in there, then that'll break that cycle. Okay, got to run. That's Thank awesome. you for your time. Thank I'm you sure so much. It'll be helpful to a lot of people. Okay. But yes, absolutely. Thank you. Talk to you God soon. God bless. Okay. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. What our heads can do to take us out of the places sometimes that our bodies are actually in that are really, really good. Really, really good. You know, sometimes the grass isn't greener over there on the other side of the fence. But our minds can think that it might be and we leave the very good thing that we got sitting right in front of us. But can be a coping mechanism too. Thank God that we have that ability too on the other side. I mean, how many abuse victims have I talked to that in the midst of abuse, if they couldn't, if they couldn't, remove themselves from the present moment. And I mean, I've had abuse victim, victims describe to me in their out of body experiences that they used to look down at the child being abused, that they had to go to another place. Well, God's given us that ability too. You know, a lot of faith is, as Hebrews 11 says, it's the it's a conviction of things not seen, <laughs> you know, but hoped for. And a lot of this ability to, to see and believe and have hope for something that doesn't exist yet. I mean, that's what really runs the whole universe. Our ability to have faith that there's air out there. <laughs> and if I go like that, it's going to come. I can't see it, but I'm going to have faith and I'm going to trust it. I mean, you know, love is like that. And sometimes we don't know that that love is going to hold us up and reach the hope that we have for it unless we can get out of the noise and have the faith to step into it. And when we do that, perfect love casts out fear. And we start to settle and get stronger. Okay. 844-940-2774 is our number. We're going to go to Maryland and talk to Ashley. Um, and let's see what's on her mind. Ashley, welcome to the program. Hi. Hi. Sorry. Hi. So um, hey, I've had this rather, to me, unusual problem. Um, Wait a minute. Start, start over. Kind of Start over. You went out on me there. A little bad connection. Try one more time. Um, I'm trying to get over a very unhealthy Christian mentoring relationship. Ooh. And I just, I, I'm not going through the stages of grief properly. I go up to, you know, anger, sadness, and you're supposed to like let it go after that. But I go to anger, sadness, <laughs> back to disbelief, anger, sadness, back to disbelief. Hey, Ashley. And I just... Ashley, yes. I'm glad. I'm really glad we have the stages of grief, but, you know, it, it's from a long time ago. There's so much, and it's good. It's really helpful. We do have all those, but it never comes in perfect stages, so there's nothing wrong with you there. You're going to have a lot of different feelings when you go through stuff, so don't worry about that. The question is, are you getting over it, and did you learn from it, and are you protected and safe now? So what happened in this relationship real quickly? So um, I was, I, I, I was like 22. I was in the, uh, gr college, grad school. I was very young in my grad program. Um, I come from a very, very traumatic childhood. Um, mm. And when I got saved, you know, it was kind of like I went, I just thought it would be an idealistic thing because I've obviously got rid of all the bad stuff in life early. That's kind of how my thinking was. Um, hey, but I like when it. I, had I like it. 
It doesn't always work out <laughs> well, that way, but it's a great plan. Got the bad stuff over way. with. I'm going to Disneyland for yeah. now. That's what I thought. But when I had um, gotten into a church relationship, there was a lot of you know, emphasis on you know, discipleship. And I had met this woman. I thought she was great. She had, you know, um, a great family. And I I had a merger wish. I, I, I read Safe People. Um, I, I thought, like, maybe God's favorites that he puts into really good families and they have really good, stable life. If I just yeah. kind of merge with them, then God would also bless me with that. I mean, completely wrong thinking um but that's that's where i was um but essentially um hey, ashley, because ashley, i was thinking, ashley ashley yeah but what if i said this it wasn't wrong thinking it was immature thinking it was thinking mm-hmm. that 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 really fit for a particular stage of childhood development which you didn't get to complete mm-hmm. probably because of all the abuse and so it just wasn't done yeah. yet. And I'm sorry that yeah. it disappointed, but I wouldn't get down on you for that. Oh, well, thank you. So essentially what happened was I ended up pretty much being completely controlled um, to the point where I couldn't even make a decision, big or small, without having approval and, um, you know, a stamp of approval from, from her. Um, I ended up having a lot of anxiety. I mean, granted, I had anxiety beforehand, but I had even more anxiety. I wasn't, I, um, I didn't follow my gut instincts on things. I just figured that I was somehow always wrong and she might, she was closer to God of some sort, so she was always right. It was definitely a one up, one down relationship by far. It it sounds like she might've been so close to God that she got confused. Who was God? Yes. So she essentially, I um, played that the, role in your the, life. It was like a, yeah. So after like seven years, uh, around seven years of this, um, life just went crashing down. I crashed. I mean, following kind of everything that I, that I was supposed to be doing, it just it was terrible. It was bad, bad advice. Um, so essentially, I got changes that heal. I think it was a chapter 13, 14, 15. This chapter is about growing up, and I realized, oh my goodness, this. I never grew up and I'm in a really not a good relationship that's keeping me from growing up. Good um, to so I, uh, I, I relate to her uh, as best as I could that I was, um, I had to kind of step back from the relationship. I told her I became really codependent. I, I, I had to give her approval for everything. I didn't grow up. It kept me immature. Um, just very honest, owning up to, you know, kind of where I was wrong. I just try to not make it like, uh, accusatory right. so you got, by just you got, out of, you got out of prison. You left home. Well, not quite because she flipped. Um, she flipped. She kept on calling me. She kept texting me. I had to block her number, block her emails. I blocked social media. And then the only thing I couldn't block was postal mail. So then I'll be getting letters of how <laughs> great I was. Letters from her, you know how I need to come back. God wants me to come. I I could not. I'm sorry. Every I'm time sorry, I got a letter, that, that that sentence just got to me. See, I blocked everything. The only thing I could block was postal mail. That's a good one. That's good. Of course, you should collect them all. Maybe, right? Put them all in a box, and then every month just send them all back unopened. You could do that. But so, I, what is the what, question? I, I get the I get the that. scenario. I've seen it. I've seen it. You know, lots of times. So, what is the question? I, I, I'm i having a hard time just moving on from it. I go from like hurt as in, you know, I've had such a, I, I thought I went to, I was in a church and I was doing good. And then I got, I feel like I got abused all over again. And yeah, then after trying her? to get out of that. After huh? her? After her? I felt like she was the abusive one, <laughs> like, like spiritual abuse, like just being manipulated no, I mean, and controlled. I mean, I mean, after her, you went to another church and this happened twice? No, 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 no. This, oh, okay. is, this is recent. Okay. I ended the relationship last year. This time. Oh, now, okay. I even, till this day, I mean, last month, I was still getting stuff from her. No matter what I say, she won't leave me alone. Um, the good thing is I'm moving. So I don't, I think that's the last thing there is to go. She won't have my address. so I'm not going to get anything else from her. But, well, I'm you know, you, so... you can always not respond. You can literally, you don't have I don't to respond. keep... Okay, then don't respond, then that's fine. It's water off a duck's back. Ultimately, if it got dangerous, you could get a restraining order. But tell me your question for today. I love it that you've escaped. 
And I'm glad changes it heal. You know that when I when I wrote that book, the last section is on becoming an adult. And what she was doing mm -hmm. was keeping you in a parent child relationship. And the goal of every parent child relationship is for the child to grow up and be one of the big people like that. And she should celebrate your growing up. And you came to her one day and said, I'm going to be my own person. She should have thrown a party, but she flipped out and wanted to put you back down. So that's not good. So, so what's your question? I love it. I love it. I you escaped. Have a heart, like I, 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 thank you. But I, I, I've escaped physically, but like mentally, I just feel stuck. Like I can't believe that happened. So like, I'll think about just different situations and how like I was gaslighted yeah. over and have over. You, have you gone, um, have you gotten any therapy? Uh, yes, I've started going to a, to therapy um, regarding that. Um, but it's just, just been hard. And I, when, when I'm making, when I'm making progress, because it's been a year and it, it has not stopped um, the contact, the mails and the pictures and all that the letters the pleading but are you um, are you op are you opening them my husband at first i was and i stopped but then my husband opened them because he was just i guess it's just intriguing to him but um well tell him I, it, tell you know, him if he, he, them, you know if, he, if he wants to watch a horror movie let him watch it but don't tell you about it or send it back or yeah. have him ask him to say look i'm lady i'm gonna ask you this one time leave us alone you know but yeah ultimately here's what here's what i would say um you know what happened is unfortunately you said you came from a really abusive background and i don't know what all that means but i know what happens and what happens in in those scenarios are you know first of all you don't find you know basic security right and you don't mm -hmm. find the freedom to have your own thoughts and feelings and trust your own judgments and make choices and say, stop that. That hurts me. And and you usually don't find a pattern recognition to find, be able to see the kinds of people that are actually going to help you grow versus the ones that are going to hurt you or keep you down. That's why people repeat cycles. The reason, reason one, one, people that, one of the reasons it's good to have good parents is because you learn, oh, that's what a nice person looks like. I'll go find one of those. Well, mm. you grow up in abuse and you go, oh, well, that's what somebody that loves me looks like. I'll go find one of those. And we just repeat the cycle because we're programmed to learn. That's what it is. But what happened was mm. you were supposed to be, Dad, come and I wish this had happened for you. You were supposed to go from that into a safe family. You read my book, Safe People, right? Our book. And you were mm -hmm. supposed to be loved out of that counterfeit stuff that you had experienced. So from then on, you could recognize the good stuff. And so that's what's got to happen now. You just escaped another one. That's fine. I mean, it's fine. What I mean, you're not to blame by that for that. But now you've got to get into a setting where you can process this. Now, let me give you a couple of thoughts here. One is, I really would love it if you get to see a good therapist and a good therapist mm -hmm. that comes on a good recommendation and that they are somebody that, you know, that takes a stance towards you to not control you. I mean, there are therapists that will try to control you. And if you ever smell that, mm -hmm. then you talk about it and, and get out of there if that's true. But but somebody that their stated goal is, I want to help, I want to help you become your own person. And we're there helping you, but also to process all of this stuff you've been through. A. B, here's the second thing I want you to do. I want you to find a spiritual community that is not one that's authoritarian like that with all this, you know, crazy one up and one down thinking, but that has some sort of a group system where brothers and sisters get together, not parents and children, not leaders that are up on pedestals. And Jesus said, said, don't call anyone on earth your, your father, rabbi, leader, or teacher, for you are all brothers. So I'd like to see you in a support group that you're, it's maybe led by a facilitator, but it's not a cult led by a leader. Mm -hmm. It's a facilitator to do one thing, facilitate peer healing. That's what the Bible says ought to happen to us. That's what all psychiatric research says ought to happen to us is that we have relationships that heal us, 
not control it. So I'd love to see you get in a group system like that. You might try something like Celebrate Recovery. You might try a 12-step program where you're just free to talk about your own experience and gain support. But I think you're going to probably do well to have individual counseling and therapy as well as some sort of support system too. And then read some spiritual materials. I would encourage you to join boundaries.me. I've got a million topics on there about this very thing, you know, the control and the gaslighting and all that kind of stuff. Take a look at that and get in a good support system. And and don't worry about the stages of faith or of grief. They're going to kind of come up as they come up. <laughs> but if you're in a good support mm-hmm. system that can help you process those, then they'll, you'll move through it. Okay? Okay. Thank you so much. All right. And I'm sorry you've gone through this, but I love it that you broke three free. And remember this. I want you to remember something. You still there? Mm-hmm. Okay. This happened to you in a church where you were controlled. Yeah. Hear the words of Jesus. He was about freedom. To set the captives yeah. free. Okay. Paul follows up on that mm-hmm. and he says this. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. If you are in any spiritual community where there is not freedom. Now, I don't mean Mm -hmm. the absence of limits and you can do whatever you want. Nobody ever says anything. I'm talking about where you have the freedom to think for yourself and believe for yourself, agree or disagree, leave or don't leave. Then that's not a good place. Okay. Yeah. That's what cults look like. All right. So remember that. Thank you for your call. I'm happy you're part Thank of our you. audience. Okay. Uh, oh, gosh. One of the things that um, grieves me the most um, is when I hear stories of what's referred to as spiritual abuse. I think in Boundaries.me, we have um, – Jessica, do we have some – I think we have several segments on spiritual abuse in – We do. Yes, we do. In Boundaries. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um so go to boundaries.me, check that out, become a subscriber. There's all sorts of stuff on there on this topic and other kind of control relationships and the dynamics of those. But it really grieves me because, um, you know, you think about this. God designed us to flourish and have choices and freedom. And anything that's tromping around in his name that controls people just de facto can't be about him. It just can't be. And again, I don't mean the absence of limits and guidelines and expectations. We all have that every good relation, but it doesn't mean you're not free to not go do that. You're not free to go do it the way you want to do. See freedom. Galatians five says this, it is for freedom that Christ has died. That was the biggest deal to him because without freedom, there's not love. And love is the ultimate goal. If you get in a relationship where somebody's controlled by somebody, that's not love. That's slavery. You can't call it love. Freedom is the kernel of everything, at the kernel of everything that grows in a good way. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, By the way, if you go to boundaries.me, um, the team is telling me here, and you search for spiritual abuse, then you can find the program. So, so go to um, go in your browser and go to boundaries.me and search for spiritual abuse there on the program. Okay, so let's see. Um, what time is it? I I can't believe you know how fast how fast this hour goes. Um, it goes fast. Uh, let's see. Um, Where are we here? Uh, Let's go to Sacramento and talk to Rebecca, who is engaged. And has a question. Hello. Are you Rebecca? Yes, I am. Hey, Rebecca. Yes. Welcome to the program. I'm I'm a Christian, and I I go to church here in 
uh, in the area. And um, I have this fiance and I've had issues with him not having what I consider to be proper boundaries with other women at church in particular. And there's this one lady in particular that. And now, now let, let, has, let me uh, ask this. How, how long have you been with him? Um, well, officially about three and a half years. Three and a half years. And how long have you been fiancéed? Well, um, most last October. Last October. Okay. And is yeah. this your first marriage? Um, yes. Okay. But not for him. Okay. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 54, by the way, <laughs> and he's okay. 63, and he, he had a previous marriage. He had one previous marriage, and how long has he been out of that one? Um, over 12 years. She passed away. Oh, okay. All right. So what, what is the question? He's, he, what's he doing with other women? Well, um, when other ladies sometimes have come along and have wanted to apparently get information out of him, about our relationship, you know, it seems like he, he's, he tells them stuff, he, you know, and of course, you know how ladies, sometimes they want to know, they want to know stuff. But there's this one lady in particular. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I don't know that. I can't, I, I'm trying to think of, okay, if Tori and I ever been to church and ladies are coming up and, and asking Asking me about our relation, I don't think I've ever had that happen. So I don't know if it. I, I don't. I don't know that it may happen in your church or a lot. But anyway, so the ladies come up anyway, to him now. Go ahead. It, you know, there's there's been a variety of things, but there's this one lady in particular that's a very strong, uh, strong personality. She has, you know, she has really crossed physical boundaries. I feel like she, you know, she just had sometimes acted like she was like a kind of like a second girlfriend and right in front of me she's so how nice she, to him but sometimes she, how has she done that well like like one day i was sitting with him in church and she came around and she sat down right beside him on the other side and she reached out and put her hand on his his upper leg and then she pulled some stuff out of his bible and it was kind of like she was just helping himself to her personal space his personal space you know and i'm sitting right there and, you know, you know, she, another time he's, he's running a camera and she comes around and just puts, you know, I'm sitting on the front row in church and she comes around and, you know, kind of slowly puts her arm around him. And, you know, I'm sitting right there and she just, she just almost seems like she, she knows what she's doing and she's doing it on purpose, yeah. but, Sound, but sounds he doesn't like it. Anyway, he, he doesn't. He, he, it's been a course of like a, a year or two. This lady has just done thing after thing. And, but he also, you know, with the former girlfriend, she, um, she was calling and texting and I started, to, you know, this hadn't been a problem earlier on in our friendship, but it was, there was a period of time where this really seemed to escalate and I was concerned about it and I brought it up, but one day he kind of made me feel like an idiot for being concerned, but I just, tried you know i just felt like normal people would know that he wait a minute he he made he made you feel like an idiot how did he do that well just the way he reacted when i brought it like, up yeah what did, did what, what did he do what what did he do he said i had al he had already told me he wasn't interested in her but you know when all this communication keeps going on and i can see it you know texting calls you know whatever um you know, that to me, that was just, uh, it's kind of yeah. like, well, how do you, you know, normal, I think any woman worth her salt would care about whether he's <laughs> carrying on excessively with an ex-girlfriend. I mean, isn't that, that's, I think that's pretty normal, but he didn't seem to think I had a problem, but I know that sometimes, you know, things can happen. Things change if you interact too much with other people. And Well, that's true, but, so, but, you know, it doesn't have to, it doesn't even have to get to that point. There is already a problem. The problem is that he's allowing stuff to happen that doesn't feel good to you. So we don't have right. to even, we don't have to have it, let it go to the next, next stage. So right now, what you're saying is, look, we're, we're in this circle, right? Me and you. And sometimes, sometimes you, 
you let other women kind of come into what feels like my space. Right? right, exactly. And I don't like it. I don't like it. Exactly. And I don't want to, I, I don't want that to be okay. And I don't like it that you don't understand whether you agree with it or not, that you don't listen to me in telling you when I tell you that that bothers me because you could end right. this. Okay. And, and so that's and, the issue. And, he, and recently we were talking and he kind of seemed to think that it was my problem that I had the issue. He didn't. I was trying to explain the property line around him. I'm trying to point out that she's invading his boundaries. And also well, it doesn't like even matter. It doesn't even matter. He's calling and texting her back. Yeah, you know, he was, you know, that that particular situation has right. subsided now, but the the other lady, she she keeps, you know, she's 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 very much around and there's you know, a, you know what they're 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 like buses, there's another one every 15 minutes. So it doesn't matter which lady or what lady you deal with one, that you know, it's going to happen, it, especially if he's doing some dynamic. He's got to learn the dynamic that kind of invites this, okay? And he's also got to <laughs> learn how he how he might be unknowingly, if it is unknowingly, but kind of, you know, urging it on, right? So I yep. here's what here, here's my concern for you is that you're. It sounds like with his responses, he lets you, he invites you into a debate of whether or not this is a problem. Okay, that you've got no. There's nothing going on here. Why do you have a problem? You follow me? Yeah, yeah. That's not, that doesn't even matter. Okay, what matters is we've already got a problem. It doesn't matter whether he thinks it's going to go anywhere or not. It doesn't matter whether he did whatever he thought he didn't do or should have done or other people. It doesn't matter. You're in a relationship and you are the guardians of each other's hearts. So if it yeah. is a problem for you, unless you were psychiatrically, you know, like out of touch and didn't want him to get in the car and drive to the grocery store, that'd be a different story. This is a, you're having a normal reaction and don't get talked out of it. And so just, just say, look, Thank I you. love you. I love you. I want to be in a relationship with you, but I want to be the only one in a relationship with you. And I don't want you playing back when they hit the ball in the tennis court over a year side. I don't want you to hit it back. I want you to turn and run the other way and turn to me and put your arm around me. When they put your arm around her arm around her, say, excuse me, and come over here and grab me. That's what I want you to do. And if you can't understand that this is hurtful, then we're going to hit pause until you can. That's what I would do. Mm. Okay. Wow. Is there is there any other thing that you could I could say to him to help him understand that it's that it's not my, you know, he has a responsibility. If he would say something, they might care. But people that are that like the strong lady, she may not care what I think. But if, if oh, he she doesn't say it, care. No, she yeah. probably doesn't care what she didn't care what you think. Yeah, I would tell him. I'd oh, say, yeah. and here's what I want you to do. When she comes up and do this, I want you to to disengage from you and put put both arms around my waist and just sit there and hold hold me and, and talk to her there while we do that. That'll do it. It'll be over. Every time she comes up, if he comes over, puts both arms around you and starts just swaying like a lovebird, she'll go away. If she doesn't video it and put it on the internet, it'll be amazing. I'm kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> but, <laughs> come on. You got to ask him, look, you, you know, if you don't want to be in my circle, then you tell me, but I want you there. Okay. I got to run. Hope that's helpful to you. Thank you so much. Thank okay, you very Thank much. you for your call. Bye -bye. You know, um, she brings up a great, a great point here. Um, and the point is, a lot of times when we give feedback to somebody that something might be hurtful to us, um, the immediate thing that happens a lot of times is it turns into a debate whether or not that's right or wrong. And a lot of times it's in fuzzy areas. And in a significant relationship, that's not the question. The question is not oftentimes 
I mean, not all the time. The question is not oftentimes, you know, should you be hurt by that or not? The question is, you are hurt by that, and I love you, so I want to care about it and do what's right for you. Okay? You know, one of the biggest principles you see in the New Testament along these lines is there's a uh, there's a line of thinking a lot of times it's around you know it's around like religious practices and does somebody drink or not or do they go to this kind of ceremonies or not or all this kind of stuff and and the principle is there is look I'm free to do what I want I'm not doing anything wrong here you can't tell me I'm doing anything wrong and the Bible says you're right but here's what you're doing wrong what you're doing wrong is you're not loving the other person who's wounded by your freedom. So he might think that he's okay to flirt with other women, which given another fiance, maybe, because maybe he's just a playful guy. That's fine if that's what it is. But even if that were true and that hurts her, then the law of love sits above his ability to, you know, not get convicted in court. And so obviously this gets, you know, there's, you get to a place where somebody would say, well, it hurts me when you leave the house on Wednesdays. Well, that's different. So anyway, I hope that's helpful to you. Can't believe um, our, uh, our time is gone. Um, I was going to try to, um, you know what, we're going to go to one more call. Maybe because I've just missed seeing you guys. I've been, you know, gone, shut up, and not getting to talk to you. I miss you. So let's go, let's go to Larry in Nashville, and then we'll close out the program if Larry and I can get this done pretty quickly. Larry, are you there? Oh, we lost Larry. Um, oh, but let, let me try to take a stab at it, Larry, and then then we'll go. Um, here's what I got up on my screen. It says that, um, Larry, um, wait a minute, Albie is calling me back here. So isn't this great when you don't have any help in the studio hey there. There in, in COVID land? Yeah. So, uh, sorry to jump in here, but, um, I, I just sort of started pulling the calls off of our list here because we're at two, but, uh, Larry was calling in because he started talking to his ex-girlfriend and he wanted to know, when do we know if it's okay to go back? He's read never go back. <laughs> he's read a lot of your books and he's sitting here going like, well, maybe though it is okay to go back. And why did he think that? I don't know. Like, that's why I wanted to get that's him. That's all he here. told you? Yeah, that's all we got to. Yeah. All right. So let, let me take a stab at that. Um, Larry and all the, all the Larry's out there and the Susie's out there that are like Larry. Um, let me deal with the sentence. Like it's up on the screen. This is who he's talking to. His, start talking to his ex-girlfriend. When do we know that it's okay to go back? Hey, Larry, it's okay to go back. Go. You're a free person. Is she what you want? I mean, it's okay. It's okay if you, you know, all you eat is peanut butter. Not going to have a nice life. Probably going to get sick. Could even have serious. It's okay to go back anytime. But see, here's the deal. Is she who you want? Which gets to the diagnostic question. And the diagnostic question is you deciding first, what do I want in a relationship? Somebody that can connect, somebody can respect boundaries and freedom, somebody can deal with imperfections and forgive and get over mistakes, somebody that can see me and she as equal partners and develop our strengths with each other and grow together, somebody has the same values, somebody that doesn't have a lot of drama, whatever the list is, okay? Now, for some reason, she's an ex. So for some reason, when she got hired to be an ex, how do you get hired to be an ex? You fill out an application. I'm a girlfriend or I'm a boyfriend. I'd like to be an ex-girlfriend or an ex-boyfriend. Let me fill out the application, okay? Here's the requirement. I got to be controlling or I got to be an addict or I got to, to invalidate you or I've got to, you know, Something I got to do something to qualify for the job of being X. And it sounds like to me she qualified for that job. She got the job. She got X. 
Now you're asking, well, should I now, now, you know what, should I promote her from X to current? Well, I don't know. Does she meet the job requirement for current? Maybe she got struck by lightning and had an awakening and something's different. Could be. It happens every day. But more often than not, somebody wishes or hopes it has happened or forgets the past and they bring them back in and promote them to current from X and give them a raise. Hope you're following this metaphor. But they didn't qualify for the job. So is it okay? Absolutely it's okay. But I would go through a pretty significant interviewing process and let these be your two tests. What is new and what is different? And is it sustainable? And what has gone into making it new or different? If she is new, if she has new behaviors, she can be vulnerable where she couldn't before. She can have patience where she couldn't before. She can be sober where she wasn't before. That's new. Have never seen that in her. Whoa. Looks good. And what is different? What are some new capacities? Some ways she's grown. The way the relationship works differently than it did now. And is that a sprint or can you depend on that for a marathon? Only time will tell. But also what will tell is what went into it to produce that. Did she go into some sort of known proven path of help? Did she get some good therapy? Does she have a mentor? Has she dealt with destructive life forces? Is she grown up? What's made it new and different? Otherwise, you're going to go repeat the past. Okay. That's kind of the way I would think about it. All right, Larry and Susie and Mary and everybody else. It's um so fun to be back with you guys. Thanks for all your well wishes and my getting well. I'm continuing down that path and appreciate your prayers. Um, share the program if you like it. If you're finding a place here that you can think about life, then please share the link. We need for more people to find out about it so we can stay here. Um, we don't know what it's going to look like, obviously. Post, you know, lockdown world, we don't know. But if we build an audience before then, then maybe we can continue to kind of integrate this into the post, my post lockdown life. And because I would love to continue to do the program, but we need you to share it to do that. And also, if you like what we talk about here and you want to learn more, go to boundaries.me. It's the platform that we've developed where I take all of these concepts, but you actually learn them and become, you know, kind of like you join us in a learning community about how to take these concepts and apply them to your life. Okay. All right. It's fun to be with y'all and it's weekend time and I will see you um, on Monday until then. God bless. See you then. Bye-bye.